All right, today we're gonna demonstrate how to install the new universal roof mount ladder rack. Today we have Billy here to help uh, show us this install. Required PP for this install is gonna be a face shield, earplugs, leather gloves, and our weld jacket, as well as safety glasses. Now the weld jacket and the face shield lens is to cut down the intermediate bar between the two uprights. Associated tools with this install, gonna be our cordless drill, our drywall screw gun. We are going to need a ratchet, a 3 8 extension, our T45 Torx bit driver. You're also gonna need your 3 8 bit. Drill bits needed for this is gonna be a 7 16 drill bit. That's gonna be used for drilling out the inside for our barrel nuts. The 3 8 drill bit, that's gonna be for drilling through the trailer. We're also gonna need our silicone gun. And as we're working on a black trailer, we have black silicone in here. You're gonna need your tape measure, dry erase marker. Fasteners for this are gonna be the two and a half inch carriage bolts the joint connectors, inch and a quarter hex heads, and two inch hex heads, okay? Now, we also have some touch up paint. First thing you wanna do is touch up any of the paint needed on your ladder racks, as these will get chipped or scuffed uh, during shipping. The very next thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over, we're gonna prepare the trailer, and to prepare this trailer, the first thing that we wanna start off with is putting wheel chocks, blocks in between the tires. Then we're gonna to go to the rear of the trailer. We're gonna drop the stabilizer jack down. For trailers that are not equipped with the stabilizer jack, we're gonna use a jack stand and the jack stand will get put directly underneath the center of the bumper. Okay, now those are for trailers that aren't equipped. From here, we're gonna go up to the top line jack and we're gonna raise up on the jack. We wanna apply a little bit of tension on those as we're gonna be getting inside the trailer. That's good. Next, we're gonna grab our ladders. This will take two six foot ladders. We're gonna stage the ladders up at the very front. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna stage this on the other side of the trailer as well. All right, now we're gonna walk around the trailer and have a plan of attack of where we're gonna mount the roof mount racks, okay? Now, anywhere near the cam lock door or door jams, you're not gonna have a stud on the opposite side of the trailer where those door jams are. So you can't utilize your door jams for lining up your fronts. What I found is the very front stud or front corner post, what we'd call, is the best location for your front uh, roof mount. Next is going to be the stud end from the rear corner post. Now, the reason why we don't want to use this steel, the rear corner post here, is the way that the trailer is built. If we were to mount a rack right here, the interior wall, corner post, and back trim is going to be in the way, preventing us from being able to put our carriage bolts through to bolt it down. So we're going to come in one stud off of the back. Now, that's our game plan going into this. We're gonna mirror the curbside to the roadside. Now, before we get started, we wanna open up the trailer just to make sure that we're not gonna have anything on the inside that's gonna interfere with that. All right, and we notice the very first thing that we have is we have the spare tire mount that's on the very first stud in. That's gonna interfere with us bolting those down so we'll if the customer wants to do that, we're gonna have to relocate this mount, okay? Up in the front of the trailer, there's nothing that I see that's gonna interfere. Basically, those bolts are gonna come right through the front wall about right here and here. So we're gonna be good on the front without having to remove anything. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove our mount. This is gonna be our drywall screw gun with a 3 8 nut setter. And 
notice that as you get that last one, you want to grab the mount. We're just going to set that down for now. We're going to reinstall uh, that and touch that wood up once we're done. From here, we're going to switch our bit out over to our number two Roberts bit. And we want to remove the top screw in the stud, okay? Now, anytime your screw is above your shoulder, you need to get a ladder. Uh, you don't want to be uh, trying to remove screws from above your shoulder. What will happen is you'll end up slipping off and skipping across the sheet, okay? So Billy's gonna go ahead and remove this one. We've already staged our ladder over here. Okay, and then Billy's gonna slide his ladder down and uh, get the back to it. We already got a ladder on the other side, so we'll just restage this one up to the front. All right, now that we've removed the screws, we're gonna grab our silicone gun and we're gonna come in and we're gonna fill the holes that we just removed because our bolt holes are not gonna line up at that same mark. Let's get a little bit of black silicone. We're gonna fill the hole, kind of wipe it clean. We'll come around, we'll do that to all four holes. You always wanna remove the screws first, then silicone, okay? so. It allows the silicone a little bit of dry time while we prep our long tube for the um, saw cut. All right. From here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our tape measure. We're gonna go to the rear of the trailer. We wanna measure from outside corner post to outside corner post. We're going to demonstrate it with the door open if it's easier to close the doors you can close the doors but basically what we want to do is measure from the outside corner post to outside corner post and we have 72 and a quarter we want to cut that about a half inch short so we're going to cut this to 71 and a half okay from there we're going to get our ppe on for the abrasive saw as the universal mount the long tube comes at 102 inches wide for 100 wide. Any other trailer you'd have to cut down to your uh, specified width. You will need the weld jacket on for the abrasive saw as there are shot, uh, sparks that will flash back. And we don't want uh, any front cotton shirts to catch fire or anything like that. You're going to have your face shield lens, safety glasses on, earplugs in, leather gloves. We're gonna mark our tube down to 71 and a half. Okay, now that we got the saw lined up, we're gonna put our foot clamp in, tighten the clamp to the backrest. From here, we're gonna two ladder racks we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut both at the same time that way we can be done with the saw okay and we've already marked our 71 and a half go ahead and tighten the clamp and we're going to saw cut this
All right, and we're just gonna set these off to the side now. And I'll safe to go ahead and remove uh, your leather gloves, your face shield, and your weld jacket. We will keep the safety glasses on. Your plugs are questionable right now. If you prefer them, keep them in. But at this point, our loud uh, saw cuts are done. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our 3 8 nut driver and our corded screw gun. We're gonna prep our cordless drill with the 3 8 drill bit. And our 3 8 drill bit, this is our exterior hole, okay? All right, now that we've silicone the holes, we've already cut our intermediate bars. We're gonna go ahead and lay the racks out. Now, the reason why we wanna lay the racks out is when we mark these to drill them out, um, it ensures that the holes are gonna line up with what we do. If you mark everything based off one rack, that one rack uh, mounting holes could be in Okay, now, it's key that you use each individual rack for its own location for marking that out. It just reassures that you're gonna get the bolt holes lined up. We're gonna grab our mount. We're gonna hold our mount tight up against the J rail of the roof wrap. We're gonna grab our dry erase marker. We're gonna make sure that it's nice and vertical gonna put a dot for the top one dot on the bottom one and we'll set that rack on the ground below we'll go ahead and we'll mark all four racks out first and like I said it's key that you use the rack that's going to be going in that desired location these racks are built by humans uh, we do our best to ensure that the mounting holes are in the same spot on each rack. However, uh, you always take the chance of one being off by a 16th or an 8th, so it's always key to use the rack that's going to be going on that particular stud for marking out. Okay, we're going to go to the other side of the trailer now. Gonna grab that rack, we'll go ahead and pull it up tight against the J rail and we'll get this side marked out. Now the reason why we're not using two inch hex heads here to set these in is the hex heads on two inch are not gonna be long enough to go through and hold that up as a pilot for us. So we're marking it out, we'll um, come back later, drill out pilot holes, then we'll drill those holes out with a 3H drill bit. Okay, now that we've got all four corners marked out, we're going to go ahead and grab our drywall screw gun and we're going to come through and we're going to set our pilot holes. What the pilot hole does is allow a um, uh, small hole, makes it easier for drilling out with the 3H drill bit. Now we're using the inch and a quarter hex head here to get the exterior hole. Now since these are inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter uh, steel tubes, we're going to end up using a two inch hex head to drill out a pilot for the inner uh, portion of the tube. Okay, so we've got our inch and a quarter pilots. We're simply going to grab a two inch hex head, put it into the hole, put your screw gun in reverse. While it's in reverse, you're gonna push forward. That's gonna strip the outer hole out for you. Now you could put the gun in forward and it'll allow you to create a pilot hole. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that on the upper and the bottom hole. And we'll do that for all four corners. If you choose just to use an inch and a quarter hex head on the exterior, well then you're going to be trying to take a flat uh, stud steel uh, with a 3H drill bit and drill through, and you'll find yourself uh, drilling out forever. Creating a pilot hole always makes it easier. All right, now after we're done drilling our pilot holes, we're going to switch over, grab our cordless drill, get our 3H drill bit, now I prefer the cordless drill one on the ladder just so that if it uh, binds, I have more control.
doesn't really matter which hole you start with. We want to drill out, drill all the way through. And remember on your front corner post, this is an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter stud, so you're going to have two walls of steel. All right, and what Billy was doing there is he was reaming the hole out on the inside, kind of clear up any splinters from the interior wood. We're gonna drill out the upper hole. Okay, and we're gonna repeat these steps on all four corners. Now, could this be done with the half inch electric drill? Yes, um, but it is uh, much safer with the cordless. We're gonna grab our inch and a quarter hex heads. We're gonna start off with a pilot. We're gonna create our pilot hole. Now you could use the two inch right out the gate, but it's uh, you have more control with inch and a quarter when you're starting your outer pilot. Okay, now that we got our outer pilots, we're gonna switch over to the two inch hex head now. We're gonna put the two inch hex head on, put it in the hole, put the gun in reverse. And as you're putting the gun in reverse, you're gonna push through, that'll strip the outer threads. Then put the gun in forward and you'll be able to create that back pilot hole. Now on this particular side of the trailer, this is a hat stud, so it's only gonna have one outer later of uh, steel so basically what we're doing is we're putting that pilot hole into the interior wood okay we're going to ream the holes out start with the bottom Okay, we're gonna go over to the other side, create our pilot holes. Like I said, pilot holes, they just make it easier for when you're switching to the higher uh, gauge of drill bits. So when you're drilling through, we want the 3 h drill bit on the exterior, driving all the way through the trailer. Okay, now that we've drilled that out, we're gonna go to the inside of the trailer. And this is when we're gonna switch over to our 7 16 drill bit. Now when we're drilling out the inside, we only want to get the interior wood and the interior layer of steel. You do not wanna drive this all the way through the trailer. Uh, I do not recommend using your electric drill, the corded one on this uh, application as it'll drive right through. So we always use cordless on this. We're gonna drill this out. This allows the barrel nut to recess into the wood. And the length of that barrel nut is gonna be long enough to where it barely touches that steel and that's why you gotta get that. Now on this side here, we have the hat stud. It's only the wood. Up in the front corners, these are inch and a quarter studs. So you're gonna go through the wood then just the first layer of steel. Reminder, you do not want to put that all the way through the exterior. We need that exterior to be 3 8 That helps catch the carriage bolt. Now you'll notice the trim pops off here. We'll come back after the install and we'll pull out the staples and we'll re-staple that down with our small staple gun. All right, now that we've got the inside all drilled out with the 7 16 drill bit, we're gonna get one uh, employee on the outside. He's gonna grab the ladder rack. He's gonna grab his two inch carriage bolts. I know in the beginning of the video, I said in, uh, two and a half or two and a quarters. And they are the two inch. And I always like to start with the top hole. The top hole will help rest and hold the rack. It also helps prevent uh, the rack from swaying and scratching the aluminum sheet. 
So we're gonna guide that through the two holes that we drilled through, both sides of the stud. I'm gonna go on the inside here. Billy's gonna hold the rack up for me. I'm gonna jump up to the front. And if you look through the hole here, you're gonna be able to see uh, the bolt. Now you're gonna have to coach your uh, teammate on the outside whether he needs to raise or lower the bolt. That way it uh, can protrude through. Now you're gonna see it come all the way through the wall and you'll see the threads almost at the end. Okay, now we're gonna grab our barrel nut. We're gonna grab our half inch washer, put our half inch washer on the barrel nut and we're gonna drive that into the wall. I'm gonna put that on there, uh, finger tight, maybe tighten it up a little bit more. Um, that way it'll allow us movement for the bottom if we need to raise the rack up to line the hole. Okay, now that we got that one, got the barrel nut with our half inch washer. We're gonna go ahead and tighten these ones down. This is our T45 adapter on a half inch uh, or three eighths inch uh, ratchet. I'm gonna tighten them down by hand. Now, once we get the entire system all set up, we're gonna come back through and we're gonna re-torque these down. All right, now there's a couple of things I wanna point out here. On the bottom of the rack, you're gonna notice that the holes, you wanna make sure that that outer hole, that three quarter inch hole is through the outer and the two middle layers of steel. The only thing that should be that three eighths hole is gonna be the uh, inner side of that rack. That's gonna hold the square portion of your carriage bolt. Okay, now that we got the carriage bolt in there, grab a barrel nut with my washer. Go ahead and move this uh, splinter out of the way. Tighten the top one. That allows the rest of the rack to rest. And then if I need to move the rack up or down to line the bottom bolt hole, just makes it easier. Okay, we got that bottom one on there. And our barrel nut with the half inch washer. Now we'll go ahead and tighten this one down. Now when you get towards the back of the trailer, you're gonna notice that sometimes on some of these, you may need to add washers uh, to get the proper thickness to get the tightness that you need uh, But I always like to finish putting the racks all the way on and then come back through and check that Okay, now we're gonna go to the opposite side of the wall. We're gonna repeat these steps Now you notice the trim popped out we'll come back later with our small pneumatic staple gun and we'll restaple those down All right, now that we got the inside uprights all tightened down, we're gonna to come to the outside of the trailer. We're gonna stage the ladder up towards the front. We're gonna take the intermediate bar. We're gonna set that up on top of the roof. You're gonna get your partner on the other side of the ladder. I'm gonna help guide this tube in. While I'm guiding this tube, Billy's gonna slide it all the way in, bottom it out against my rack. That's gonna allow him enough room to slide that rack in on his side. Now, what the goal here is, is we want about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half hanging out uh, over our gusset. From there, we're gonna take an inch and a quarter hex head set screw and we're gonna set a set screw in the front of the rack and we're gonna repeat that on uh, this side. Now, here's a, uh, 
kind of a guide. So you got about that much that sticks past and supports on that gusset right there. That was the key of cutting that down to 71 and a half, basically a half inch shy of your rear corner post. If you go anything more than that, you're not gonna have enough um, tube and you take the potential of it sliding out. So we're on the other side of the rack. We're gonna put a set screw in the front and that's gonna prevent that intermediate bar from sliding out. And we're gonna go and repeat those steps on the rear. Okay, we're gonna slide the ladders over. Okay, get on top of the ladder here. We're gonna wait for Billy. All right, and he's gonna slide the intermediate bar over. I'm gonna help guide that in. We're gonna slide that in, bottom it out against my rack. That's gonna be just enough to clear that. Now, Billy had to pull out a little bit on his rack over there to get it to slide in, and then we split the difference. We basically want about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half um, inset. That upper tube is going to be three inches long. And uh, like I say, if you cut more than a half inch off your rear corner post when you're cutting that tube out, your tube's going to be too short. Okay, we're going to come over to the other side, set the other set screw. All right. Now that we've got the outside done, we're going to just do a little walk around around the trailer. I'm going to double check to make sure that uh, the racks are sitting flush. Make sure that they're upright vertical. Now up here in the front, on the front and the backs of these racks where they meet to the side of the trailer, it's always a good idea to add silicone. You could add clear silicone to the face of those. That way if water's splashing uh, back over the trailer, it's not gonna insert through those bolt holes. Now these uh, trim pieces that buckled out, we're gonna pull these staples out. We're gonna come back through with our staple gun and we'll staple those back down, make uh, for a nice aesthetic inside. All right, so what we did is we went back through and we tightened these down. Now uh, on this back one, I didn't like uh, how loose it was. So I added an additional washer to get the build out to get the tightness that I needed. Um, now what we gotta do is we have to relocate the spare tire mount. In most cases, what you can do is you can line up your mount with where it was. We're going to try to cover up this bottom hole. And we're going to use our inch and a quarter hex heads. And we're going to mount it down. And what we will need to do is this hole that from the upper screw, what we do is we can take that filled out with almond silicone. And we can always grab some sandpaper and lightly sand down the edge to kind of clean up that appearance right there. All right, now one thing to take into consideration when you're doing ladder racks, you have to worry about overall height Okay. Now you'll notice on these ladder racks, it'll allow you to drop lower to bring it to the roof height. Uh, you do not want anything to extend 13 feet. Most of your tall bridges, um, stuff like that in nature's on the freeways, interstates. So height is always a concern when putting ladder racks on. Um, also want to educate your customer that their trailer is taller than it appears in their mirror now. They've got an additional, let's say it's 19 inches that hangs off the top of the roof. So always want to make sure, let's go ahead and pull a tape on that build just to make sure that we're below our required height. 
pull from the top of the rack. And this goes all the way to the bottom of the floor. And we're at about 19, nine feet, six inches, give or take. So we're well within any legal limit and would be able to clear any bridge. Always educate your customer on the height that their ladder rack is though. Other things to take into consideration is the length of the customer's ladder. For the demonstration of this install, we installed two ladder racks. Um, and in most cases, it's an eight foot ladder. So a customer may want three ladder racks. And in that case, we would go center of the trailer.